Abimelech came from Bethlehem of Judah, as David did and Christ did, which is adding significance to him being a type of the Messiah. And for what I have to say, I would that you would at least give that credence or uh, thought in that he, Emiliac, is the type as David was and as Yeshua was, uh, having been born in Bethlehem. No coincidence, in other words. Naomi then becomes the type, as all good women are, as wife and mother or bride who, who brought into the church family, I'm sorry, as wife and mother or bride and mother of the church. Orpha and Ruth are representatives of the regenerated who are brought into the church family by the union, by that union of marriage with Christ. You follow that? They are converts from the lost in the world and into the family of God or Israel. Right? They were in the world. They went out. They, together, the father, the son, they went out, the father, the bridegroom, the wife, the church, went out together into the unconverted world and converted these two uh, types uh, of, or representatives of the regenerated in the church. They've become a part of that family. We became a part of the family, a Christian family. If you will, we become a part of Israel through that union of marriage with Christ, right? They are converts from the lost in the world into the family of God or Israel. These two women represent two equally regenerated Christian converts who after being born again are both equally able to follow after the conversion uh, the true church following after conversion after their conversion following the true church into holiness as here typed by Naomi's determination to go home or back to Israel after their conversion these two converts from the world then become two different examples of the spiritual war that plays out within. That is the tug of the world and the tug of the spirit. I think this will maybe make even more sense to you if you read Ruth and meditate on it. Something here that I just uh, inserted was that experience in life, I have found that it's uh, inevitable uh, for this uh, bereaving process uh, to be avoided. And by that I mean the honeymoon will be over with all who are joined unto Christ at some point. Because he withdraws. And this is something that I've learned experientially in my life, watching, observing in my own life, in my own heart, and the heart and lives of others. And the purposes thereof, or therefore, are divine and orchestrated by God to draw one closer. To lose some presumptuousness, if you will. And that you would also come in contact with the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Now, the test of, of life, this is, this is the test of life, and this was the test of these two converts but these, the test is the same, though it takes all different forms. All regenerated will have their hearts examined and exposed to what value they will put on their rightful inheritance. And when we enter into the covenant with the Messiah, when we enter into this union, this relationship by marriage, at some point we will be tested and tried as to what value that we personally put upon our rightful inheritance. And in these two converts, Opa and Ruth, we find this dynamic. Now this same 
dynamic is played out over and over in the scriptures. We find them played out in Cain and Abel, of which we've spoke in times past. Esau and Jacob, whom we've spoke of much in times past. Esau, who sold his double portion, that is his double inheritance, that is his baptism of the Holy Spirit for a bowl of soup. With Jacob was the diametric opposite with him who pursued or determined to receive the inheritance. Do you see how he types uh, Ruth? And how Esau types Opah? And then again we see this dynamic in Abraham and Lot where Abraham had said to him, look, behold, all before it's land you choose, I'll take the other way. Lot looked to, and he beheld Sodom and saw the, the fruitfulness of it, the green of it, the commerce of it, the materialism of it, and he chose eastward, to go eastward, which in type means to backslide. He chose to go eastward and joined himself and mixed himself with the Sodomites. And uh, he headed eastward, mingling himself with them, uh, which cost him dearly, nearly his life. And, and I, I, I suppose God, God knows that he might have at points wished that he had died. You know, with the events that followed him, uh, the incest and the so forth, the, the bringing forth of two, two, two nations that persecuted Israel relentlessly, uh, we, we should be able to see that when we don't value the things of God uh, as much as we do the material things, that the consequences are not only for ourselves, but also have ramifications for all our progeny. It really, really does. Cause and effect. The truth shall lead whomsoever. Now the truth I'm relating to Naomi. Okay? The truth, Naomi. The, uh, it, she or it shall lead whomsoever out of the unsanctified spirit world into the promised land. But all will be faced with the counting the cost. Can you see? Uh, as the two, Ruth and Opal, were faced with counting the cost. And as typed in Naomi's words, go, return each of you to her mother's house. Go. Well, this reminds me of the, of the Lord when He discouragingly said to him who would follow him, you know, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Do you see the discouragement or the counting of the cost? And then he went on to say it again in these words. He said, He that would follow me, come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That is not really encouraging. Is it? The truth of the true church is that one should move on to perfection in order to receive the fullness of the promise, but count the cost. No coddling here. 